Welcome to Amanda's Stream of Consciousness. All right, so this is going to be just kind of a fun little video here in the U.S. Today it is Thanksgiving, so I thought I would do this fun little video that, you know, once you're stuffed full of turkey and you just want to relax, you can hang out with me for a little bit while I do some chalk art. So as some of you guys know, I have a lot of health issues and quite honestly, I've been doing very well lately until November hit the last few weeks have been a struggle. But anyways, I spend a lot of time on my phone when I'm not feeling well. And so as I've been doing better, I've been trying to get off my phone and do more things, experience more things. Anyways, on my phone, one of the things I spend a lot of time on is Instagram and I watch those little reels. I came across this guy who does chalk art drawings and I was like, you know what? I should go outside and pull out the sidewalk chalk and do some artwork. So anyways, at the start of the fall season, I did a handful of these. Um, the first couple, I followed a Bob Ross tutorial and then I just did one random one with like fruits in a basket. So anyways, I had a lot of fun with this and I posted on my Instagram story seeing if people were interested in a video on this. So yeah, this is what this video is. It's going to be not so much a tutorial. I will go ahead and mention some things, but it's me following a Bob Ross tutorial except chalk art edition. Now, I gotta be honest, the oil techniques that Bob Ross uses do not translate very well to chalk. It's such a different medium. The other hard thing is sidewalk chalk, I have a lot of colors in it, but I don't really have the same colors. Like, I don't really have good browns. I have reds that have like a pink tone. So it's a little bit challenging to get everything to work out correctly color-wise. But I work with what I've got, and as a little tip, don't really worry so much about what colors you're using. You see I'm using like orange, that's gonna be greenery and shrubbery and trees. The biggest thing I would say with doing the chalk art is do not be afraid to layer. The more texture you add and the more you layer colors, the better results you're gonna be. Now, from the camera's perspective, honestly, you can th see things taking shape pretty well, but from where I'm at up close, it does not look good like as I'm working on this. It's once you take a step back that all those details and little bits of texture that you added in, that they pop and you really see the full picture come together. So if you decide to make your own chalk art drawing, which I highly encourage you because, come on, it's so much fun, if you're like, this is turning out like trash, my biggest tip is to just layer. Just keep adding more texture, keep adding more colors, and when you get to the end and take a step back, you'll be like, oh, okay, it kind of all comes together better. Another thing, this is kind of in line with the colors, is I, I didn't really worry about what direction my light was coming from because I can't really do darks and lights so much with the chalk, so I more do different random colors to create highlights and lowlights. So if I'm making, say, a tree and I want to have one section be darker, well, instead of using a darker green, because I had two shades of green and they were really similar, I might use some blue as more of a darker tone on the left-hand side, and then on the right-hand side, I might use some yellow. And so even though I've never seen a tree with blue leaves, adding in those darker colors, it kind of tricks our brain and our brain kind of fills in like, oh, that's supposed to be shadows, that's supposed to be highlights. And honestly, if you decide to give it a go and make your own chalk art, just experiment, play around. As I said, this is like my fourth one of these, so I've kind of figured out some different things. But honestly, every time I keep experimenting, one of the things I'll do is I'll have a little squirt bottle. Sometimes I'll squirt the concrete and then draw over it. Other times I will spray down a piece of chalk because it just transfers differently. Sometimes I will just kind of tap the chalk onto the concrete. Other times I'm more coloring in. You'll also notice that I do a lot of blending. That makes a big difference. Um, I blend with my finger. You know, I started off using a glove on this one, but I went back to my finger because it blends better. Do be careful because when I did this a few months ago, I did three of these in one week. It might have been where I was working because the third one I did on a rougher section of concrete, but after the third one, I absolutely ripped up my finger. I don't think it was actually bleeding, but yeah, it was like severely injured. So just keep that in mind. You might want to use a glove or else just go easy on it. One other thing I want to mention as far as chalk art goes is the point of this is to be creative, have fun. It does not have to turn out perfect. I think that's part of what makes chalk art so approachable is it's not permanent. Like right now as I'm recording this voiceover, it is raining outside, my chalk art is gone. So, you know, it's a bit forgiving in that sense that if it turns out terrible, you don't like it, well, it's not forever. It's not like immortalized as, wow, that was a bad job. And quite honestly, it's okay if your project doesn't 
doesn't turn out exactly the way you wanted I will be honest every one of these I kind of have a vision of where it's going and then where I end up is totally different and that's okay have fun with it be creative it's a great way to get outdoors of course it is starting to get cooler here at least where I'm at so the weather might not be super great for this, but you know, come spring or summer, this would be so much fun. Or instead of doing chalk, get out some crayons, get out some colored pencils and just sketch on a piece of paper and have fun with it. So for the rest of this video, I thought I would just kind of chat, tell you all what is going on in my life. And like I said, today is Thanksgiving that I'm posting this, um, at least here in the US. And so I did want to spend a little bit of time kind of reflecting on thankfulness um, and yeah, just hanging out with you guys and enjoying this holiday. So, okay, I guess I'm just gonna kinda start and mention some things that I'm thankful for this year. Um, one of the things I'm thankful for this year is, I would say my health, although my health is still in pretty bad shape, but I guess I would say the progress I've made with my health. This time last year, I was really struggling. Quite honestly, I'm still struggling a lot, but even where I'm at now with the month of November having been very rough on my body, I am still in such a better place than I was this time last year and that's something I'm very grateful for. Like this time last year, I would not have felt well enough to go sit outside and do chalk art. And it took me about an hour to make the whole thing, to do this whole little sketch. Yeah, I would not have been able to go an hour sitting outside doing artwork this time last year because my body was in just such rough shape. So that is one thing that I am very thankful for that I am not where I was this time last year. Um, like I said, you know, I've kind of been going through a bad flare-up this month, and that's obviously discouraging, but I'm trying to, you know, spend some time being grateful for the good things that are going on in my life. So that's one thing that I am very grateful for. Another thing I'm very thankful for this year, um, and honestly always, but my family, my family has been a huge support system to me this past year, especially with everything I've gone through with my health. Um, you know, just my mom takes me to doctor's appointments, people help me get food and all sorts of things, and I'm just so thankful for their support and their help. And also kind of on that note, like, I want to give my parents a special shout out, and I think you guys might just find this interesting. I don't know that I've ever really talked about why I started my channel. Um, it's kind of a longer story and basically had to do with when my health issues started, my life kind of got, you know, upended, and I just, you know, I want to do something for myself, and that's kind of why I ended up starting it. But Honestly, I was never a big watcher of YouTube. I live in a rural area. We had terrible internet for most of my life growing up. Um, only within the last, you know, few years. Well, probably 10 years now. I don't know. For a while now, we've had like high speed internet. But yeah, for a long time, like, if I wanted to watch a five minute YouTube video, I'd have to let it sit and buffer for like 30 minutes. So I didn't really watch much YouTube. But I can credit both of my parents with me getting into YouTube. So first of all, my mom deserves credit because my mom is the one who instilled in me and in my siblings a love for arts and crafts, for all things creative. When I was a kid, she would take us to AC Moore after school and we would pick out a little craft project. Well, actually, we'd first like wander the store for hours. It probably wasn't hours, but as a kid, it felt like hours and it was amazing. And then we'd get to pick out some little craft project and bring it home. We always had little arts and craft things. We did perler beads. My mom actually took some art classes in college and so she has some really neat like sketches and things and she knows a bit more about like, I say art theory, I don't know if that's the right word. But anyway, she's shown me different things over the years like shading and perspective. And I've never really gotten super into sketching, but you know, it definitely challenges like the creative part of our brain and causes me to exercise it and practice it. And so I credit my mom for instilling a love for arts and crafts within me. You know, I'm now into crochet. My mom doesn't crochet, but she's the one who took me to the store when I wanted to learn and we picked out a hook and some yarn. So that's part of what got me started on YouTube is I had a passion for creative things, arts and crafts, crocheting, DIY, making things, being creative. Um, then my dad also deserves a lot of credit. I'm very thankful for him as well because he has a very entrepreneurial mindset. And so he was the one who actually kind of put the idea of YouTube as a way to make money into my head. Um, he, had, he knew a guy from work who had a YouTube channel and my dad was asking him about it. And so my dad was like, you know, maybe I should start a YouTube channel. And he told me about it. I was like, you know, that sounds really cool. So my dad and I, we both started channels around the same time. I've got my little crafting channel here. My dad has an outdoors, hunting, fishing, that kind of a channel, which I will link to if you want to go check that out. But anyways, yeah, my parents are definitely a big part of the reason I got into doing YouTube directly and indirectly, but I definitely am thankful for them and the way that they've poured into my life over the years. Uh, 
of things I'm thankful for in my family. I'm so thankful for both of my sisters. Y'all, they are so much fun. They are such really cool people. I am so glad they're in my life and we have a lot of fun together. And working on this chalk art, it kind of made me think about when we were kids and we would play with the chalk because this chalk is, I don't know, it's probably like 10 years old. It's like leftovers. My mom would always surprise us every few summers and she'd get like the big thing of the chalk with the different colors and you know we'd have a blast playing outside. One of our favorite things to do growing up as kids with the chalk is we would get out our like scooters and little cars and things like the big wheel and on the driveway we would make roads and pathways. I think we probably spent more time creating the road system than actually riding around on it but yeah we would use the chalk we'd come up with different methods of how to create the roads like sometimes someone would sit on a car and hold the chalk and someone else would push them came up with some really you know very efficient ways to create roads and things so that was a lot of fun and another thing i'm very thankful for this year is my friends both old and new um there have been a lot of people who have poured into my life over the years and like you know i've been able to make some new friends this year and some youtube friends and it's been really nice having people in my life who are there to support me and have my back one of my friends, I'm gonna give her a special shout out that I'm thankful for is Shannon over at the Spoonie Stitcher. We've actually been like friends for a few years because years back she reached out to me on Instagram um, about my Christmas crochet along ugly sweater because she had a question so I helped her and then every now and then we would chat or you know we'd let each other know about sales and show each other different crochet things. But like in the last year or so, we started like chatting a lot more. We've gotten closer. Um, Y'all, she is such a sweetheart and she has a number of health issues as well. And she has been such an encouragement to me because she just really gets what it's like to, you know, have these health problems and kind of your life derailed and try to figure things out and not knowing how it's going to go from day to day. So I'm just thankful for her and for so many other friends and people in my life who have been so supportive of me. In line with friends, I am so thankful for all of y'all. I could not go through things I'm thankful for and not mention y'all. Now, I don't, it's not like I necessarily know everything about everyone who watches my channel. I mainly just interact with y'all in comments and things and get to learn little bits about your life and what projects you're working on. But I really do, I think of y'all as my friends. Like when I work on a video, I'm like, I'm so excited for, for my people to see this video. I hope they like it. Y'all leave some of the sweetest comments ever on my channel. I'm one of those people who's very cynical about people on the internet. Like people on the internet, it just, the internet brings out the worst in people if we're being completely honest. And when I started my channel, that was one of the things that kind of braced myself like, oh, I'm gonna be getting hate comments, yada, yada. I very rarely get any kind of hate comments. And y'all leave some of the sweetest kindest messages ever like i i swear y'all are the nicest people on the internet and i am so thankful for all of y'all and the way you've supported my channel over the years the way you watch my videos and share them the way you interact with my content and leave comments um one of my favorite things is hearing that y'all have made something that i did a tutorial on that makes me so happy every now and then someone will send me a picture and I'm like, ah, oh, I feel just so proud and excited. I'm like, yes, yeah, somebody else was encouraged to be creative because I made a video. And yeah, I am just so thankful for you guys and for the love and support you've shown to my channel over the years. It really means the world to me. I would not be able to do this without y'all. You know, like I said, I started YouTube because I wanted to earn some money and with my health, I'm, especially right now with my health, I'm not able to work and support myself. And so I have to do something like YouTube that I do in my own time. And I'm so thankful, like this will be my next thing that I'll mention that I'm thankful for. I'm thankful to live in a time where we have platforms like YouTube and we have this opportunity to be able to earn money online and on our own time. I think it's such a blessing. And of course, you know, the internet's not perfect. These platforms are not perfect. You know, if I could change things, there's things I would change. But just to even have these opportunities is truly incredible. So, you know, I am thankful for YouTube and for the platform here. And last but certainly not least, and quite honestly, this is the thing that I am most thankful for. I am so thankful for my God and I am so thankful for my Savior Jesus and the salvation that he provides. This year, like I said, has been really hard and I have definitely seen God move. I have seen him answer so many prayers and I have definitely experienced that when I'm weak, he is strong because I'm just telling y'all, it's been a lot that I've been through and God has carried me through so many things that I never could have made it through on my own. He has provided in so many ways and I'm so thankful that he has provided for me, not just physically, but also spiritually. I am so thankful that he did not leave me and he did not leave this world lost in our sin and deserving of his wrath, but that in love, 
He sent his son Jesus to take my place and to face the punishment that I deserve for my sin. And I'm so thankful that Jesus was willing to come to this earth to live the perfect life I couldn't, to be crucified on a cross, to be buried in the grave, and most exciting of all, that he came back to life three days later and he now lives eternally and he offers me and he offers you that eternal life. And I'm so thankful for a God who loves us. And I'm so thankful that he offers us the gift of salvation, that if we believe in Jesus, that he's the one and only way to the Father, that we will be saved. So anyways, those are a lot of the things that I am thankful for this year. I, there's a lot more, but I don't want to make this video too long. It's already been very rambling, like I said at the start. This is just like my stream of consciousness, me just rambling. So what I would like to know is down in the comments, let me know what you are thankful for this year. I think it's so helpful to spend time practicing gratitude and to take a moment and even in the midst of all the crazy things that are going on in this world, to find, even if it's the, just the little things that we have to be thankful for, I think it's an important way to lift our spirits and encourage each other. Thank you for watching and I hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving. What you see on screen right here is me a few years back when my health was a little bit better than it currently is dancing as we put up the Christmas tree I am dancing to the hamster dance that was like my childhood song it was also a Christmas song for my family we had like the weirdest Christmas playlist like we'd have Christmas songs we'd have Alvin and the Chipmunks Christmas and then we'd have some non Christmas songs like the hamster dance so anyways we listened to this when we put up the Christmas tree and you know I used to try to always put something funny at the end of my videos and you know with my health I haven't been able to put as much time and effort into the ending of my videos but I wanted to put this here at the end so that way if you watched the whole video and made it this far you have something just absolutely ridiculous and hilarious to entertain you hopefully it brings you a smile um, honestly it is much better when you can hear the music if y'all want to see this whole video I can actually upload the whole thing with audio I just can't monetize it but I can upload this so if y'all want me to upload like a really embarrassing hysterical video myself let me know in the comments. I might be willing to upload that as a special weird little Christmas gift for y'all. But anyways, okay, so this is, it's Thanksgiving, but here in this video clip, I am at the Christmas tree dancing around. Here's what I am really curious about. So here in the U.S., it's Thanksgiving Day today, and there's like a big debate about like, do you decorate for Christmas before or after Thanksgiving? Some people, like me, I start pretty much November 1st just because it takes me a while. Other people are like, no, you have to wait till after Thanksgiving. As far as I know, the U.S. and Canada are the only places with a Thanksgiving Day, and I think Canada's Thanksgiving is like a month back. So I am really curious, those of you who live in other places of the world where you don't have Thanksgiving, do y'all have a whole debate about what's too early or too late to set up for Christmas? I am super curious, please let me know down in the comments. Alright, I will wrap this up, Bye bye